Hello, children, it's good to see you. It's me, Christian, your professor, and I'm here to talk about week four. So, I hope you're ready. Let's go. Objectives of lesson four. By the completion of this week's lesson, you should be able to recall content learned in the LBGB and handbook. Why? Because you have a test. That's why. And then connect study project to life application by sharing insights learned from study with others, which is basically what your discussion board is this week. But oh yes, you also have an audience needs assessment this week. So we'll talk about that. All right, so um, <clears throat> you don't have any further reading in the LBTB and handbook. You're basically gonna review it for your test. Um, and then in the CBT book, read chapters three to six this week, okay? So since we're talking about the test, let's talk about the test. It's 50 multiple choice questions. Uh, you get an hour and a half to do it, so it's a lot of time, especially for that many questions. Uh, you can use your notes, and uh, um, that does not mean that you can look in the books. It means that you can use your notes from the handbook. And uh, the, the main things I want you guys to to know going in, as best I can tell you, is to be familiar with the historical background questions uh, used for your study project. Okay, so we give you historical background questions. Be familiar with those. Those will come up in the multiple choice uh, test. And you, you guys know, when you, when you study for multiple choice questions, you don't need to memorize things. You need to study with the mindset of, can I, when I get multiple options on something, can I discern the right from the wrong question? If you spend your time memorizing things, it doesn't do you any good. Uh, well, you have to do a lot more work to memorize things than study for a multiple choice test. So the other thing is, is um, be familiar with the concept of reading the Bible telescopically, okay? And then be familiar with the application steps that uh, were in your studies. Be familiar with anything having to do with the laws, okay? Anything having to do with laws, be familiar. And then figurative language. Figurative language is something that you uh, need to pay attention to. There'll be questions on that. As well as inductive and deductive thinking process. What is the deductive and inductive thinking process? Be familiar with those and be able to answer multiple choice questions associated with those things. And then the purpose of charts. What is the purpose of charts? Um, whether you agree with it or not, what were the purpose of charts in your reading? And, and then literary devices. There were literary devices that were mentioned throughout. Be familiar with those, okay? So that will, um, you know, help you immensely. And if you took notes throughout uh, on things, you can use those notes on the test. You get 90 minutes to complete 50 multiple choice questions. So more than enough time. If you have any questions, let me know, but that's your test. Um, then in terms of the um, discussion board for this week. Um, let's let's uh, let's talk about that briefly. No, in fact, let me talk about the audience needs assessment. Um, so, if you open up the well, the lesson four resource folder, you will see there three things for this week: um, the audience needs assessment, and then the needs assessment tool template, and then the lesson aim verb. Uh, I'm going to briefly show you that each one. So here. Here is the audience needs assessment and basically how you're going to be graded for things, right? Just so you know exactly, you know, the value, the point value we're going to give you on that. So um, I want to make a quick point here um, on the grading for this, but also for the class. You Obviously, every week you're having stuff to turn in. So you've got stuff to turn in for um, your... Uh... All right. Uh, I, I paused there for a second. Um, <clears throat> And uh, for quite a while, uh, you won't realize it, but it was probably an hour and a half. So um, I'm trying to get back in my train of thought here. But um, essentially with the grading for the course, I want you guys to um, understand that we have a lot of different assignments every week. We've got the discussion boards. We've got the, um, the, the quizzes or tests. We've got all these, these uh, weekly um, assignments this week is audience needs assignment and last week you had multiple things you had to turn in so all that to say is um, the reason why we're giving you so many videos to show you things and so forth is so that 
you get a really good feel for it. Um, and that hopefully that answers a lot of your questions. What we're going to also start doing once everyone has turned in their stuff is we'll probably post like here's an example of a phenomenal student's work. So if you need to go back and look at that, you've got kind of a standard. Um, and, and in light of that, we're not going to give tons of feedback on um, your papers unless you really, really need it. So if you get, you know, if you got questions on, hey, I don't really understand why you got a certain amount, we probably will make a brief comment or something, but we're not, the, a lot of these assignments, I just want you to understand, they're not intended to give tons of feedback. We want to generally just make sure you're doing the right thing. If you're getting pretty high marks, it means that, hey, you're on the right track, you're getting it. And remember that this isn't the only way to study and teach the Bible. We're, we're essentially in this introductory course on the subject. We're giving you basic, basic tools, just looking at one book, in this case, Jonah, and, and helping you to discover some ways that you can apply those, to hopefully, to other other Bible study um, lessons as well. So that's the idea here. And, and so you got the audience needs assessment right there. Um, that shows you how you'll be graded. And then the other one is the actual template, the audience needs assessment template. Um, we, the reason why we put this right here is that um, in the Creative Bible Teaching book on page 106 to 107 is an exact example of what um, this is meant to look like. Um, so hopefully that really helps you to know what to put into these various um, groups um, that you're going to be um, teaching. And then the as you see some of these terms that that you should have seen in your reading, um, but if they're not familiar to you, we've got this great lesson aims ver lesson aim verbs sheet that um, I think is pretty helpful. So it shows you kind of what cognitive and affective and behavioral verbs look like. And so this will help you with what are some of the, the words you should use to, to fill in some of those areas um, for, for this sheet there. So students will blank the blank by blank, all right? So we're giving you some verbs on that page to help you kind of brainstorm what are some effective ways of phrasing what you're trying to accomplish with your lesson, okay? Um, and so um, this week then in uh, week four, uh, I'm, we're going to have two other um, videos for you. One again is uh, by Brian Smith. Uh, who will give you an example, and then Rachel, um, the TA, will, will finish. He kind of cut off at a certain point, so she'll finish a little bit of just an example of showing what that will look like. Um, but now I want to transition. We've gone over the audience needs assessment. We've gone over the test, um, and then we've gone over general understanding of the grading in the course. I want to spend the last few minutes talking about the discussion board this week. And you see that um, this week's discussion board, and this will be kind of like your little devotional for the week as well, um, Share with class members at least one insight God has revealed to you from our study on Jonah or Psalm 139. Give substantial feedback on at least one other student's insights. Okay, so this week it's it's actually only asking you to um, respond to one other student. I think most of you aren't going to read that and remember. So again, I'm going to be really looking for two. So respond to at least two students. Um, the main thing you always want to do is make sure your post is really good and then when you give feedback to someone else that you're just giving a careful, uh, sensitive, encouraging, but um, potentially, when I say critical, I mean in the sense of like you're, you're thinking for yourself and asking them questions that will help them. So um, critical analysis or critical feedback in an uplifting, encouraging way is what we're looking for. I want you to still do two, even though it says one. I want you to do two just so we keep it in line with what we've done in other courses. Um, but just make sure that you give a very, you know, more in-depth. It shouldn't be one sentence. It should be a good chunky paragraph of, of what God ha has revealed to you from your study of Jonah or Psalm 139. The, the, an example of that would be, don't just say, ah, God has just revealed to me just how much he loves me. Good. If that is as simple as it is, good. But tell me why. Give me details significantly of what in Jonah or Psalm has taught you that, how it's specifically applied and gotten to your life, and just give some real reflective content there. Um, I want to share with you something that I love about Jonah. And so let's uh, uh, go over to Jonah. Here, if you go 
Jonah's four chapters, if you go to chapter three, um, after Jonah's already had his rebellious streak, it actually kind of continues all the way through the end of the book, doesn't it? But Jonah goes, finally goes to Nineveh in chapter three here, and it says, the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. It had come to him the first time in Jonah chapter one. And it said, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. Then you see Jonah, he goes, he goes into the city, the big city, so it takes him three days to get through it, and he called out, yet 40 days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Do you enjoy my British accent, which is obviously, it's a biblical accent, because all Bible movies have British accents, right? Uh, and it says, yet 40 days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Notice it's not a conditional uh, declaration that the prophet Jonah makes to the Ninevites. He doesn't say, if you repent, Nineveh, or 40 days, if you don't repent, you will be burned down or overthrown or whatever else it is. It's, it's just, in 40 days, you're going to be overthrown. It wasn't a conditional declaration. It, it meant that this is going to happen. And uh, here's what happened, though. The people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. What compelled them to do this? This is, this is awfully odd, right? The, the word even reached the king of Nineveh. He arose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth and satin ashes. This is all because some foreigner walks in the city and says, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Awfully odd, isn't it? It makes you think, what? What? Um, how, how, how could a foreigner named Jonah walk into a city, say one phrase, and... Everyone listens and repents. Extreme repentance. I mean, sackcloth and all. And I thought only the Jews did that when someone died. Um, so so the, the thing, I, I'm not going to go into tons of depth, but I want you to think through. Wow, okay, uh, what's going on here? Why would this happen? Uh, why would they actually listen? Uh, sure, the, the context would, I mean, probably assume that Spirit of God is working very powerfully and convicting through Jonah, and his final, you know, his obedience is, is key to that. But uh, it's it's still very it's still very odd and very powerful that an entire city repents. The main point is is that they do repent, and and I love that they say, "Who knows? God may turn and relent and turn from his fierce anger, so that we may not perish." Why do they say it like that? Who knows? Maybe he might even turn and relent from his anger towards us. Because he didn't say so in his declaration. It wasn't one where, if you repent, I will not, you know, turn my anger from you. It was, no, this is happening. And they're like, well, what? There's something. Here's what I want you to remember. There's something in the heart of man. Even a foreigner who doesn't know God, even a foreign town doesn't know God, that repentance does something. It changes your options. Remember that. Who knows? God may turn and relent. Turn from his fierce anger so that we may not perish. And when God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God did relent. He relented of the disaster that he said he would do to them and did not do it. Boom. So what happened? Repentance saved Nineveh. And then Jonah is pissed. So what does this, what does this show? That Jonah's character has nothing to do with God being able to use, go and use him. Um, so... Oftentimes, people may speak to you. There may be a prophetic voice, a prophetic declaration given to you through a very ugly, not-so-mature vessel, which is also something to think about. God may be talking to someone through you that's very difficult to listen to because they're very rough around the edges, they have a bad attitude, or you just don't like them, and they're not very mature, they're not very loving, or whatever else. Um, this displeased Jonah exceedingly, which, which means he was horrifically ticked off. He went out of the city and pouted and basically wanted to die. Then I want to point out one other thing. And God is talking to him here at the end. This is the last sentence of all of Jonah, the, the book of Jonah. And should not I pity Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who did not know their right hand from their left, and also much cattle? End of book. End of book, guys. Which shows what? God is not a vegetarian. And he loves meat. That's what it shows. I mean, think about the most 
abrasive ending in all of scripture to a biblical book, and also much cattle. May that leave you with 